an act to regulate assault weapons to ensure that the right to keep and bear arms is not unlimited. Do we have your attention now? We hope so, because once again, the extreme left and anti-gun groups are trying to infringe on your right to bear arms, and they are one step closer to doing so. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Firearm Firm channel. With midterm elections less than a month away, we want to make sure you are ready to protect your Second Amendment rights. So, in this video, we're going to talk about H.R. 1808, known as the Assault Weapon Ban of 2022, and what you can do to stop it. But before we do, please show your support for the Second Amendment and help fight against the anti-gun algorithm by clicking the like button below. Also, if you are joining us for the very first time today, we encourage you to become part of the team by clicking the subscribe icon located in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Let's go ahead and break down this 126 page bill so you don't have to waste your time reading pure garbage. Obviously, this bill is aimed at banning what certain parties and organizations call assault weapons by making it a crime to knowingly import, sell, manufacture, transfer, or possess semi-automatic assault weapons. Although it is referred to as the Assault Weapon Ban of 2022, it also seeks to make law-abiding citizens criminals if they knowingly import, sell, manufacture, transfer, or possess a large capacity ammunition feeding device or as I like to refer to them as your standard magazine. Now, the drafters of H.R. 1808 threw in a little section to try and trick us into thinking they are doing us a little favor by allowing a grandfathering clause. But of course, this grandfathering clause does have some restrictions attached to it. H.R. 1808 allows a continued possession, sell, or transfer of a grandfathered semi-automatic assault weapon. Again, their term, not mine, but it must be carried on the person or within such close proximity that the person can readily retrieve and use the grandfathered semi-automatic assault weapon as if the firearm was carried on the person, or it must be locked by a secure gun storage or safety device. Also, if anyone wants to transfer or sell the grandfathered firearm, he or she must go through a gun dealer in order to have a background check run on the recipient of the firearm. Why do I say this is a trick? Well, because it's a lot easier to infringe on a constitutional right an inch at a time than a mile. What do I mean? Think about it. It's easier to get a bill passed that bans assault weapons, but lets you keep the ones you already have than it would be to pass a bill that bans assault weapons and requires you to turn in or destroy the ones you already own. So, if this bill gets passed, I'm pretty confident the next anti-gun bill will then require you to destroy or turn in your grandfathered firearms. Large capacity ammunition feeding devices may also be grandfathered in, but unlike the semi-automatic assault weapons, you will not be allowed to sell or transfer them to others. So what does H.R. 1808 consider to be a semi-automatic assault weapon? The list includes semi-automatic pistols with a fixed ammunition feeding device that has the capacity to accept more than 15 rounds, semi-automatic shotguns that have the capacity to accept detachable ammunition feeding device or a fixed ammunition feeding device that has the capacity to accept more than five rounds and has one of the following. A folding, telescoping, or detachable stock, a pistol grip or bird's head grip, a forward grip or a grenade launcher, and of course, all AK and AR type platforms. H.R. 1808 even lists specific makes and models of AKs and AR platforms that are prohibited. There are way too many names to list in this video, but you can find the link to H.R. 1808 in its entirety in the description section below. So what constitutes a large capacity ammunition feeding device under H.R. 1808? Any magazine, belt, drum, feed strip, or similar device, including any such device joined or coupled with another in any manner that has an overall capacity of, or that can be rarely restored, changed, or converted to accept more than 15 rounds of ammunition, but does not include an attached tubular device designed to accept and capable of operating only with 22 caliber rimfire ammunition. To me, the most troubling parts of H.R. 1808 are two of the exceptions to the assault weapon bans of 2022. Not only are they troubling, but in my opinion, these exceptions show the real intent of the extreme left politicians to disarm the people, not the government. 
Current law enforcement and even retired law enforcement officers are exempt from this ban. Why aren't government agents and retired government agents subject to this ban, but we the people are? Hmm. HR 1808 has already passed the House of Representatives and is currently in the Senate for voting. President Biden has said he would sign it if it makes it to his desk. So what can we do to stop this bill from coming to fruition within the parameters of the law? Call your representatives immediately and email them frequently, letting them know if they vote for this bill, you will not vote for them. Make sure your voices are heard and be loud in doing so. Remember, you give them an inch and they will take a mile. Most importantly, vote in November. Until next time, stay armed and educated.